you know why I'm here. Yeah, you know what I came to do. If it's you against me, no, I ain't going to know why I'm here. He is a competitor. Nothing but not for Bobby. You know why I'm here. That's right. He's a nine-year vet. He's a champ. He's joining us now, Bobby Portis, on the show. Bobby, I'm going to get right to it because y'all lost to the Pacers, who just beat the Knicks in a Game 7, who are somehow going to the Eastern Conference Finals. <sighs> Do you think they have a chance to uh, upset the Celtics? Uh, I think my personal take on it is that uh, I'm kind of glad that, you know, uh, you know, I don't want to be like that that guy or whatever, but I'm kind of glad that the Pacers did make it, man. Cause you know, like as a as a fan of the game, taking myself totally from being an NBA player and someone who played against the the Pacers in the first round, taking myself totally out of that context. Um, as a fan of the game, I would rather the Pacers play against Boston because they're more healthy. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously. The Knicks have a, you know, a lot of injury bugs, you know, obviously with Randall and you didn't OG happen and then Mitch Robinson happened and then Brunson happened and then Hart happened. You feel me? So, <laughs> um, you know, I don't really want Boston to play against the Knicks, that Knicks team being injured. Um, I think the the Pacers have done, have done a good job of staying healthy this season. And this time of year is about who's healthy and, you know, who's ready to roll. So I think that is a more favorable matchup, uh, you know, for as a fan of the game, then more so uh, being a player. No, I, that's completely makes sense because yeah, what are we what are we left to watch if, if no one's even available? Yeah, for play? real, it's for real. Kind of boring. Um, during the series you guys had with Indy, you called them front runners. Uh, we love that. What did you mean by that? Um, you know, I just think in in in, in context, you know, uh, you know when guys are um, rolling and. You know, guys are up. You know, everything is everything. You feel me? But, you know, when guys are down, um, you know, I don't, I don't think the energy is the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, you know, I don't think the energy is the same when they're down. I think, you know, obviously when they're up, they're talking and, you know, saying all type of things on the court. But, you know, I just think that, you know, when they're down, the energy isn't the same. Yeah, in game uh, in one of the games against the Pacers, game three, you got ejected for an altercation with Andrew Nimhard. What, what, what was the, what, what happened there? What, what was going on? Um, I think for the most part, uh, you know, I think as a fan of the game, you can easily say, uh, uh, you know, you got to control this, control that. But, you know, it's a hostile environment. It's game four. Uh, you know, we're playing our tails off each and every night to be the best we can be, uh, preparing mentally, physically. And sometimes, you know, I think that it's the emotions can get the best of you. Uh, you know, obviously, um, I got ejected and I had to sit back. You know, it's, it's different, man. Now, I'm not saying, like, getting ejected is cool or whatever it is, but getting ejected in the first quarter and getting ejected in the fourth quarter is just two entirely different <laughs> feelings, you know? You kind of sit back in the first half, you're like, damn, bro, it's... it's it's six minutes left in the first quarter. And then, a, lot of, a lot of time to be back there by yourself. And then the first quarter man. goes by. <laughs> Quick shower. And then the second quarter goes by. And then halftime come, your team come in the locker room, and it's <laughs> like you just sitting there like, damn, I really let my team down. You know what I'm saying? So I had to come back game five and, uh, you know, do my thing for hey, sure. Hey, Bobby. I'm I'm disappointed in Pat Bev. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a story. I got ejected one game, <laughs> and I'm sitting there in my locker, I'm taking my shoes off or whatever. I look up, Pat's walking in the locker room, so I'm thinking he about to go to the bathroom or something. I said, "What you doing?" Yeah. He said, "Yeah, I got through out. I ain't want you sitting back here by yourself." <laughs> That's funny. I'm disappointed. I'm disappointed he ain't rolling with you, dog. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny as hell. Hey, Bobby. Also, you said being ejected in the first quarter versus the fourth quarter last night. I don't know if you were logged on yet, but Jay McDaniel's series is over. He goes for the dunk of 20 seconds now. I don't know Not about dunk, you, but I'm, yeah. if I'm KCP, I'm putting him on his ass right here. This is just, this is, you don't do this. Look. Uh, yeah, they've given in. The game's over. I mean, yeah. like, uh. Look, even the Rome knows something's about to happen. I don't know, man. I'm kind of different now, man. Like, at first, like, <laughs> I don't know, bro. Yeah, like, right. I'm just different now, bro. Like, you told I'm different. You're you catching gotta, a, you are catching like a three game suspension the... to start next year if they did this again. I mean, yeah. like nobody's at the nobody's at the rim though. Like at least like protect the rim and don't let nobody go to the rim at least. Well, you wait, know, but like, they in con, they yeah, said Denver they were, had just we good. That was it. it. They were running the clock out, like for real. Nah, he was trying to go for a little, uh, <laughs> you know, a little show, a little showtime. <laughs> I, I think guys on. 
I think guys at the crib on the couch would appreciate it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> he's no, he's, he's just straight up. <laughs> BP, the Buck season ended for the second straight year in the first round. I know obviously injuries played a big part of that, but why, why else do you think it just didn't work this yeah. season for you guys? Um, I just think the main thing, man, is that, you know, you can't really put a tab on, you know, when something is going to happen to somebody. Uh, uh, that's one thing that you really can't put a tab on, man. That's one thing that we kind of harp on a lot um, over the last couple of years is the injury bug, man, and being healthy at the right time and peaking at the right time. Uh, that's a real thing in sports, man. Just not in basketball, but in every sport across the board, man. You kind of need all your troops to go out there and fight with um, to be, um, you know, it's the best team you could be. No excuses made. Um, obviously, we first round exits the last two years. How can we come back and be better? But, uh, you know, if we don't have the, one of the best players in the world on the floor available, um, it's kind of tough, especially when the team is kind of built around him. Yeah, you said a lot of it's luck at this point. Whoever's healthy, you guys weren't healthy. I think a if lot. you were healthy, obviously, it's different in England. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, coaching change midseason. How did you enjoy playing for Doc? Man, I love playing for Doc. You know how it is, man. Like, Doc bitch, you just rock, man. Right. Like, if you can score the basketball, if you can, you know, do the things he wants you to do on a nightly basis and – you know, just lock in on your assignment, man. Doc just let you be you, man. Doc unlocked a new player in me. Uh, he took my game to another level. Uh, you know, calling feature play. Like, this is my ninth year in the league. Like, and I never really had feature plays, but I can always score the basketball. You, you know, feel Doc me? Like, the he was actually. Whisperer, man. <laughs> yeah, for real. He like, he, he, he let me just get to it, man. So, like, I was forever, forever grateful for him. Like, all the outside noise people say about him, whatever they say, but. Individually, uh, you know, he he took my game to another level. As a as a fan on the outside looking in, I I want to know, y'all were thirty and thirteen when y'all made that coaching change. I thought y'all were playing solid basketball. What went left with with Adrian, in your opinion? Um, I don't know what management thought or whatever it was, or uh, I just think that you know, obviously it's tough, man, when you become champions. Um, obviously. That's the that's the pedestal now, right? Like the the main goal is to always get back to where you once were, and you know, like having that feeling is is, is crazy, man. Having a parade, having a a, a ring ceremony, uh, getting a ring, having a ring at the crib, and s suddenly feel yourself start to just chase that feeling again, and it's hard getting there, you know. So um, I think just mid season. Um, just evaluating our team. They do a good job of evaluating the roster and whatever it is. And, you know, I just think they felt like, uh, you know, we needed, you know, new leadership or whatever it was. Uh, you know, obviously, I just feel like, uh, you know, when you, you know, have a team that won and then you make a big trade for a top 75 player in Dame, then obviously the expectations rise even higher. So, um, I, don't, I don't think it was just us feeling the pressure, man. I think everybody around there feels the pressure, man. When we lose one game in Milwaukee, man, like when you come into the next day into the gym, it just feel like <laughs> it feel like it's a it's a weight on your shoulders. Like we can't wait to give just one win. You feel me? So the pressure just different um, in Milwaukee. Can you get? I don't know. Shed a little light. I know there was like a film session with vets towards the end of the season that Doc called. Is what what goes on in a meeting like that? Man, just, uh, you know, obviously, um, it's the end of the year. Um, you know, the end of the season, it's, there's not 10, 11, 12 guys that's probably going to be playing um, in the playoffs. The, it's the rotation gets cut short. Uh, so um, if you're fortunate enough to be in that eight, nine player group that's uh, called up on to play a role to help impact winning, uh, you know, most teams I've been on, especially the, like the last four years, playing with the Bucks. Uh, this is what coaches, our coaches, done. Coach Bud did it, and then Doc continued with it, man. Just you know, making sure everybody's good, ready to roll. Uh, obviously, it's a big time of the year for us to make that jump and try to get back to where we want to get to. So, just trying to keep everybody focused, locked in on the same page, and um, it's always fun, though, especially um, with a player as coach like Doc. You know, guys get to voice their opinions on certain things and. Um, we go out there and, you know, try to execute at a high, at a high level. BP, obviously you guys miss Giannis a ton during the playoffs, but for you, you've been a teammate of his 
for, for the last four or five years now. What, to you, is the best part about playing with Giannis? Uh, I think the best part about him, man, is it the isn't the basketball side of it, you feel me? Like, just knowing him as a friend, knowing him as a brother, uh, you know, being able to, you know, just connect with him in different ways, uh, hanging out off the court. Um, that's one thing about us, man, in Milwaukee, man. We have a have a solid brotherhood, man, in the aspect of it's not always about ball, man. We go support each other's kids at, you know, their birthday parties. Um, I found myself going to a lot of birthday parties over the years, you know, like, <laughs> for, like, kids that's, like, four or five years old and things like that. Like, we have a lot of, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we got a lot of love for, for one another, love and admiration and respect for one another. So um, it's been fun just, you know, just building that trust, building that brotherhood. Um, with them and and obviously basketball takes care of itself, man. You know I love when guys go double them or build a wall, man. I'm open for a three, man. I will take that it, it nine times out of ten every day of the week, man. You know how it is, Chandler and uh, and Luke. <laughs> but is it true that you you cold called Giannis after the what 1920 season? Said I can help. Yeah, man. Uh, that was a tough year for me uh, individually. Uh, you know, I, I signed with the Knicks, and it's the 1920 season. Uh, I, that was the biggest deal at the time I, I, I had. Uh, I remember that summer, like, because uh, I turned down my my extension. The, it's the year prior, and you know, kids don't ever do that, man. It's 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 life changing money, man. I'll turn down no extension or nothing like that, man. Um, especially like never look at you know what someone else is making. That was my problem early on in my career, looking at what other guys are making that I'm. Probably like I feel like I was better than whatever it was, but you have to know that you know whatever God has for you is for you. But anyways, uh, you know I signed with the Knicks. That was the biggest deal I had at the time. Well, it was like a two-year, 35, uh, second-year team option. So the team didn't pick my option up for the next season, and then that same season the COVID happened. So I'm at home from from March 2020 all the way to November 2020, and like. I ain't really have a team for real. So the teams that my agent is telling me, like, I'm really not interested in those teams because they're not, you know, teams that can help me raise my value team that's going to be on TV or teams that has a chance of just making the playoffs in general. So, you know, sometimes, you know, I, you got to put your pride to the side or whatever it is and, you know, just ask for help, man. So, shit, I called, I looked at the, I watched the NBA playoffs that, that season and in the bubble, the playoffs like September, October ish. You feel me? So I watched the playoffs at my home, go work out, come back home, watch the game, go home, come back home, watch the game. They had games at 12, 11 o'clock and stuff. So if you're a fan of basketball, you can watch the game. So I watched all the games. And I'm watching the Bucks and I'm like, man, I feel like there's a, there's a, there's a place for me on this team. I don't really have anybody like me that played with, you know, the physicality I bring, the toughness, the, you know, the scoring I could bring, you know, I don't really have to start. I can come off the bench and help the team and whatever it is. So, call Giannis, you know, we got it together. Told him, shit, man, I don't know you, you don't know me, but I feel like I can help you out. Uh, I can help you guys, you know, take you guys to another level. Straight up. Awesome. And in and, and, and December of 2020, I signed with the Bucks, And in July of 2021, I was NBA champion. Like, it was crazy. Seven and months later. Yeah. And three years, and three years later, y'all bring in Dame Dollar. What was that like to play <laughs> with Dame? Crazy. Like, I remember like I was in a I was in a uh, in a commercial shoot, shooting a commercial for one of my partnerships with um a company in Milwaukee, uh Educators Credit Union. Uh gotta give them some love. But uh uh <laughs> I'm shooting a I'm shooting a commercial and then everybody just goes in silence. Like, it was so weird. Like, everybody goes in silence. I'm like, bro, what's going on? And they like, we just got Damian Lillard. And I'm like, man, hey, like, don't, don't, don't believe in all that fake news stuff. You know, like, there's a whole lot of graphics out there. They put this guy in a Heat jersey or this guy in a Kings jersey. Like, they do that all the time. Like, I see myself. They might put me in anybody's jersey. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you might, you might, you might get on there and they got a, a mock trade of you. Like, they just might mock trade you. So, shit, um, I get on there and I'm like, dang, this is, this Woj's tweeting this. Like, this for, <laughs> yeah, if you see Woj's name with Sam's name, man, this, <laughs> hey, now it's, real. it's for real. Like, <laughs> You can believe it. So I'm like, hold on, man. This 
crazy. <laughs> Look at Sean's face. I'm sorry. And I think I really called Sean, <laughs> okay, no, man. Sorry. I think Look I really Sean. called Sean, no, bro. I think I called him that day, bro. And I'm like, is this for real? And he was like, yeah, man, this is, this is, um, this is, this is going down. <laughs> and I'm like, damn. Yeah, because we thought he was going to Miami. Like, and then he did just, say he was right. lonely in Milwaukee. He did say it. <laughs> yeah. No, he, he said he was lonely out yeah, there? Yeah, you guys didn't invite him to the birthday, kids' birthday parties. He said he was lonely in Milwaukee. I guess, I don't know, man. I don't, I'm not going to say he was lonely. <laughs> no, I'm not he, gonna said, say he, no lonely. he said it. He said it. He said it out loud. He said he was lonely? Yes. yes. Oh, buddy. He no, said he that didn't, out. bro. Yes, he no, did. he didn't. Right. Look it up when you, when you get over here and look it up. It's yeah. real. He said that. He's oh, like, wait a minute. Oh, my God. <laughs> Bobby, it probably was too cold out there the first year. You know yeah, how it is it in the probably... Midwest, man, you know? <laughs> That's Bobby. John lived in the Midwest his whole life. He a Midwest guy, man. He a Chicago guy, man. He know how it is off there at Lake <laughs> Michigan, man. <laughs> it, might, it might bring tears to your eyes walking outside, man. <laughs> Bobby, you finished third and sixth man voting this year behind Nas Reed and Malik Monk. Is that something that you wanted this year? You felt like you did enough, you deserved it? Uh... I think for the most part, uh, you know, I did everything I could uh, to help my team just win. Uh, first and foremost, uh, I played every game this season, including playoffs. I didn't sit out a game. So um, I feel like I put my best foot forward for my team. I'm not going to say for an award because obviously, um, you know, it's something I, I wanted, but I ain't going to say it was just strictly for that. You know, it was strictly for my team, strictly for winning. Uh, you know, we had a lot of injuries this year. You know, we didn't really play with our full team throughout the whole season. Um, for like once, you know, Chris got healthy and came back, then Dame got hurt. Or once Dame came back and got healthy, Giannis got hurt. Like, it was like a, a, a domino effect always of someone being uh, out the line of whatever it is. So I kind of prided myself on, you know, keeping my body uh, prepared, keeping my mind right. To be a better before my team, and I feel like one of the best, uh, one of the best things you can, you know, best traits you can have as a basketball player, especially in the NBA, is being available for your team. So I kind of pride myself with that more so than winning the award. Yeah. Bobby, this has been awesome. We we appreciate the time. Enjoy your off season. Uh, hopefully, we'll talk soon. Yeah, appreciate you guys too, yes, and sir. man, uh, Sam, man. Don't kill me, man, for saying the other guy's name. Man. Man, I was just, you know, you know, hey, man, I don't want no smoke, man. It's the off season. It's the off season. Here. I don't want no smoke. It's too late, Bobby. No smoke. You pissed him off. I don't want no smoke, man. Oh, we got a deal. Just trying to stay safe. Like I said when I first came on here, we was trying to stay safe, man. We was trying to stay safe, man. I don't want no smoke with you. Oh, I no see his steam wins. coat out his head. I know, I feel very yeah. awkward over here. Thank you, Bobby. We'll take care of Sean. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw the steam coat. Oh,